Good morning, and welcome to online worship at DAUMC. Whether you've been a member of the church your whole life, or this is your first time joining us, we are so glad that you are here. Pastor Meredith has returned from vacation and will be leading us in worship this morning as we continue our Holy Vessel series of Lenten worship. She will be preaching from the book of Matthew and the story of Jesus healing two women, one of which was the daughter of a religious leader. Our focus will be on intellectual and creative health as essential to our spiritual lives. I hope you will take a moment to gather some things that you will want to have handy for worship. If you have children who will be participating in small talk, they should have five or six household items with them. This can be kitchen items, a ball, a glove, a pen or pencil, anything. Adults, we would like for you to have the pieces of beach glass from your Lenten kit, as well as a flat surface to place them out on and a phone or camera to take a picture. Pastor Meredith will tell you more about this later. After Pastor Meredith's message, we will talk about next steps you can take to put your faith into action right here in our community. In the meantime, let's prepare for worship. As you do, please take a moment to fill out our contact form, which you will find pinned in the comments, and to use the comments to say good morning to those worshiping with you. Good morning and welcome to DAUMC. Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of our staff and all of the various people who are helping lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so excited that you are joining with us on this fourth Sunday of Lent and our Holy Vessels Lenten worship as we consider different pictures and our intellectual and creative health. 
I want to encourage everyone who's joining with us to use our contact form. It is pinned right in the comment section. And if this is your first Sunday to join with us in online worship, wow, we really hope that you'll use this contact form and fill it out. There's a place there, of course, for your contact information so that we can get in touch with you and connect with you. There's a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. And we love to pray with you. So please use that contact form so that we can connect with you in ministry and mission and small group and all of those things, and also with your prayer requests. Now, I want to remind you that for this Holy Vessels worship service, uh, you'll want to have a couple of things gathered with you for this worship service. If you have uh, received one of our Lenten activity kits, please have your beach glass from that ready to use for later on in our service for our ritual, and hopefully a flat surface that you can put those on, because we're going to play with those a little bit. And then for small talk, I want to encourage all of our kids to gather together five or six items around your house. It doesn't really matter what they are. Grab five or six things. I grabbed a tissue box because that was right next to me, a toy like this. I grabbed a cup and a pen because I had that close and a spoon because I was eating my yogurt. So grab five or six different things with you that we'll need for small talk today. Now, when we do gather for worship, we covenant together to be a blessing and to fully participate. And that means that we promise that we're going to fully participate in the worship so that when we're praying, I encourage you to pray. When we're singing, I encourage you to sing. Uh, focus in, light a candle if that helps you to focus. Turn off other distractions and devices so that you can really participate fully in worship. And then we promise together that we're going to be a blessing. That means that in the way that we comment with one another in the comment section, the way that we're with the people we may be gathering, gathered with in our household for worship, that all of it is a blessing in the way that we communicate and are present with one another, so that everything that we do in worship is a blessing to everyone. So gather your things together, and as we cross the threshold into worship, let's center ourselves, expecting to find healing, renewal, and inspiration. <laughs>
We continue our Lenten season of recovery, remembering that each of us is created a precious and holy vessel of embodied love. Today, we focus on intellectual and creative health as essential for our spiritual lives. Prolonged times of difficulty can impede our ability to stay creative. The picture of our lives is dulled and hope for a brighter future can fade. We need a touch of inspiration to awaken us from our sleep. We also awaken to our ability to seek out the divine healer, reaching out to touch the power we know can restore our intellect and our imagination. We emerge ready to re-engage with the world, seeking and seeing solutions, creating different pictures of life renewed, just as a mosaic artist creates beauty from broken pieces of glass. Steve Dunker. I've been a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for several years. And this is Jack, our little nine week old puppy, who will not be helping us pray today because he wants to keep biting my chin. Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, and renew our holy vessels so that we might be able to imagine and create new possibilities, new solutions. Please join me in a spirit of prayer as I pray aloud our prayer of confession. God of all possibilities, we are made in your image, and you have tasked us as co-creators of a better world. You give us imaginations and the ability to learn and progress, but we are tired. Our energy and our enthusiasm wanes. The call for ideas, solutions, workarounds, and adaptations has been nonstop for all of us. Whether we are finding ways to care for our children and keep them engaged, and well, we're figuring out how to maintain a passion for our work in the midst of these trying times. We're needing desperately to undo systems of oppression too long affecting our lives and the lives of our neighbors. Oh God, not only our livelihoods, but also our liveliness is at stake. Too often we want to give up, declare it all too hard, and simply isolate, waiting for the time for better days. It all feels overwhelming. And so we look away, sometimes even from the need in our own community. Help us, healing God. Show us our energy reserves. Forgive our cynicism. Move us one step at a time toward greater care for one another. Please join me in a moment of silent prayer as we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Amen.
gifted with the ability to affect healing in the world, no matter what. We are not alone, and we can join with others to magnify hope. Christ will answer when we call, when we reach out for the healer of our every ill, for you, for me, for all. Take a deep breath and let this truth fill you and breathe out with the relief of assurance. I invite you to imagine that assurance extending to those who may be right next to you while you are worshiping right now. Imagine it extending beyond your screens to all those who are joining with us in online worship whenever and wherever they are. Imagine it extending beyond your walls into the neighborhood, the wider community, and like the rising sun extending to all the world, let this be our peace. Amen. Let us now share words of peace with those around you, those online in the comment section right now, and with these special folks of our Do Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. Peace be with you. I'm Trisha Kumach. I'm Josie Kumach. And we both attend Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Peace, Peace be, be with you. you. And, and also with you. you. I'm Brianna. I'm Brooklyn. I'm Dana. I'm Bradley. I'm Brandon. And this is Brayley. And Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. My name is Barb Eldridge. I'm a member of Douglas Seven United Methodist Church and Miriam Circle and on the prayer team. Peace be with you. Okay, everybody, it is time for small talk. I want to encourage our children who may be gathering with us in online worship to get in really close to your screen, your device, so you can see everything that Miss Laurie, who is our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb are up to. Remember to bring your five or six household items that you've gathered. Get those uh, with you. I don't know what they're going to do with them, but let's have them. These are mine. You bring yours. And everybody, let's get ready now for small talk. Hello everyone, I am Miss Lori, and this is Laud, the lamb, and his assistant Cohen is over here this week. Laud, you're kind of blocking my shot there, dude. Okay, today I hope you had some time to go on a, basically a stuff safari. I have a whole bunch of stuff I just gathered up around the house, because today we're gonna talk about playing. Sometimes we have to take a break and play. Right, Lod? Mm -hmm. He's already playing. Playing brings us quite a bit of joy. And we don't always need something new to play with, right? We can come up with things in our own house. So what do we have in there, Lod? A spoon. Yes, a spoon. Let's see, what could we use this for? It means a spoon, Lod. Thank you. Well, hello. I am Miss Lori, and we are, we are reporting live from, yeah, could do the same with a hairbrush. Yeah, could be a drumstick. Mm -hmm. What else we have, Lod? Oh, oh, that doesn't make a fun noise. Oh, that. What is that? Actually, this is one of those things where you like catch a ball and things, but I don't know where the balls are. But, Lod, ooh, that hurt, Lod. Yeah, you have you have an idea too. Yeah. Oh, we've all got these at home. Oh, excellent! A drum. Yes. Oh, Luna, calling Luna. Uh, oh well, she's tired. Lots of uses for these, right? You can think of lots of things other than what it's meant to be. Oh, oh.
It's your friend, Lod. Mitty. No, no, Mitty, be nice to Mitty. Oh, my favorite. Here, Lod, I'm gonna help you with this. Ready, ready? Could be a, could be a hat. It's a colander, what do you think? I'm having fun, are you having fun, Lod? Oh, yeah, you are? Good, excellent. So, today was about having fun and playing and finding some joy in just everyday things. So if you didn't get a chance to, today I want you to walk around your house and see what you could repurpose all of these things for, right? So, that's part of God's healing power, is joy. It's been hard, but we can do it. Remember, we love you. Have some fun today. Look around, and let's repurpose some things and have some playtime. And remember, God loves you, and so do we. Bye, guys. I am Karen Brown. I sing in the praise band, and I'm a member of Lydia Circle. Please join me in singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, number 400. Curtis Brown and I help to lead the youth group and their Sunday morning online youth group gatherings. Our reading from the Bible is Matthew chapter 9 verses 18 through 26. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. While Jesus was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died. But come and lay your hands on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly, a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly, the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand, and she got up. And the report of this spread throughout the district. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. We reached a milestone this week, marking the one-year anniversary of the COVID-19 worldwide pandemic. It's been a week of reflection, remembering, grieving, hopefulness, and recommitment to healing and health. 
During this last year, it has become very apparent to me just how important art, music, and opportunities to create, how important those are to my spiritual health, my physical health, my emotional and mental health, to, to all of me. Lots of people can attest to this, and I've heard from many of you about your creative pursuits during pandemic time. New ones or old ones that you have clung to for survival, particularly over this past year. With our normal lives being upended, lots of folks have found that the way they spend their time has really changed. Many folks work around the clock, while others have lost their work and livelihoods. There have been the major challenges of children and families being home for school and work and play and life and, 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 and. You know all the ways that life has upended the reordering of time and activities, priorities and longings, and those creeping feelings that we will never recover. In the midst of this, though, it has been one of those curious blessings of the pandemic year to see and hear about the ways peoples have sought out creative outlets, have healed, and have found life in these creative pursuits. If you'd like, I encourage you to feel free to share in the comment section what those might be for you. Bread baking, TikTok videoing, dancing, online theater, poetry, painting, gardening, reading, computer programming, picking up that musical instrument that had grown dusty with misuse. We would love to celebrate your creativity with you, no matter how small or goofy or whatever. So feel free to put those into the comment section. One of the creative projects that has helped me over this last year has been arranging music for and playing eight-note kids' handbells. We received this set of toy handbells as a gift from my mom when my daughters were very little. Let's just say I kind of squirreled them away and we played with them very sparingly when my girls were little. Last Easter, though, on Sunday, April 12th, 2020, the call came out from the mayor of Springfield for everyone to come outside of their homes at 7 p.m. each day and ring bells or make noise in support of our health care workers. Some brain cells, I don't know, sparked in me and misfired or fired in a good way, whatever. And I knew it was time, though, to dig out these kids' handbells. My youngest daughter, Karis, and I began to play every evening on our front porch or at our front window if it was raining. But every evening at 7 p.m., we played a quick tune in honor of our community's health care workers, first responders, and essential workers. And because we could, we offered those up on Facebook Live each evening. There's not a large repertoire of music for sets of eight notes kids' handbells, so I set to creating some for us. It was like a musical puzzle. Okay, I have eight notes, one octave, no accidentals, no sharps or flats, key of C. So what can we play? All kinds of things as it turns out. Favorite hymns and kids tunes and folk songs, a whole bunch of Beatles tunes. Karis and I fancy ourselves a Beatles cover band of sorts, and other popular tunes, including the theme from Star Wars, which we premiered, of course, on May the 4th, 2020. Let's roll the footage.
too, right? Brainstorming tune possibilities with Keras, arranging them so we could play them and then getting to play them. The whole creative process was fun, healing, challenging, life-giving. Sticking to the discipline of a daily musical offering was grounding and prayerful for us. We played every day from April 12th through July 2nd, and then played again every day for the season of Advent and Christmas. The whole experience expanded my thinking again about music, art, and creativity and the power to help and heal, both in the creating of it and in the receiving of it. This really shouldn't be a surprise, though. Our minds and hearts and souls, they crave creativity in whatever form that may take for us, no matter who we are, no matter our age or our life circumstances. Humanity is formed and shaped in the image of God, and our, it, at its heart, that means being creators, just like the God who created us and the vast cosmos, co-creators with God, creative communion with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and co-creators with one another. There's a reason we need art, writing, and physical movement as a part of our educational curriculum in schools. It's fun and an outlet for sure, but study after study and life experience after life experience, they prove to us that people's ability to learn, to problem solve, to relate, to do almost anything is fed, nurtured, and made possible by the exercise of creativity in music and the arts and in a myriad of other ways too. One of the basic tenets of our Wouldn't It Be Lovely program is the process of creating beauty, taking worn out, cast off furniture and repurposing it, being creative that in turn helps create healing and hope for the Wibble associate creating it as well as the one who purchases the product. We are created to be creative. So what do we do when our creative, imaginative, and intellectual spirits are trampled on by a worldwide pandemic? Honestly, many of us are tired, tired to the bone. Some may even feel dead inside. It can feel impossible to imagine that we might emerge from the experience of this last year with new life, with creativity, with vigor, in the midst of what has felt like an unending season of exhaustion and death. Our healing story for today certainly gives hope for that new life, for creativity and life emerging from that which seems dead. Weaving together interruptions, possibility, faith, and healing through people who come from very different worlds. A powerful man come and, comes and interrupts Jesus when he is at dinner and engaged in teaching conversation to make a request for help. He says to Jesus, my daughter has died, but come and touch her and she will be made well. And Jesus gets up. And he follows the man. Along the way, a woman from the margins who had suffered from bleeding for over a decade comes into our view. She expresses her profound faith, believing that if she can just touch Jesus' cloak, she will be healed. She does, and she is. Jesus says to her, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Then Jesus continues on his way, and when he arrives at the powerful man's house, he is laughed at by the people gathered there to mourn the young girl's death when he says to them, go away, the girl is not dead, but sleeping. The people scoff at Jesus, but pushing aside their, their dead thinking, Jesus takes her by the hand and the girl arises. Take heart you are well. Take heart, you are not dead, but sleeping. Jesus invites us today, you, me, our church family, our larger community, to take heart and believe. You are not dead, but you may still be sleeping. The coming of spring certainly helps us imagine that we are on the verge of renewal of energy, creativity, and possibility. 
As vaccination rates increase and as people continue to care for themselves, their families, and our entire community by being vigilant with mask wearing and appropriate social distancing, I think many are beginning to know that we will emerge from this season of pandemic. As we continue to have important conversations and chart new ways forward of being community together as we seek to dismantle the systematic racism that has held so many in the bonds of death, we trust in Jesus' invitation to believe, to step away from the paths of death and embrace communal life. And I believe we can hear Jesus' call to each one of us to take heart and arise. Arise to new energy and to new life. Not backward to everything as it was before, but forward into new life and possibility. We must wonder and let our imaginations grow as we consider jettisoning the things we have been holding on to in our lives that squash this new life or what things we are holding on to as a church family just because we've always done this activity or have always done it that way. Or what are our next steps together as a community to bring healing and possibility to those who continue to struggle in economic, educational, and health disparities of our own making and participation? What must we call away? What must we give up and what must we take up? What will we leave behind? And what new things will emerge that we will cultivate? In this season of recovery, Jesus' voice rings clear to all. Take heart. Arise. You may be sleeping, but you are not dead. Take heart. Amen. Please join us in singing, You Are My All in All. team at Douglas Avenue plus the choir and the Zephyr class and I would like you to please join me as we seek our God. Healer of our every ill, especially our broken spirits, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that you are at work among us showing us the very way to recover from the toxicities and grief of our time. We remind us that we do not have to shoulder everything alone. 
We are so grateful to remember that all we must do is orient ourselves to you, to your spirit, and that you accompany us, touch us, inspire us, awaken us, heal us. We pray especially for all who feel opportunity and possibility is cut off to them. For those whose spirits are continually dampened and damaged by those who fail to see value in their contribution. For those whose right to full expression is stolen away. We thank you for communities, churches, nonprofits, and businesses that are supporting the flourishing of all voices especially voices that have been silenced. We thank you for the courage of innovators who use their resources and creativity to make more good in the world, making this a priority over profit. We ask for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church can continue to join in this effort now and into the future. We pray this day for our leaders in our churches, all denominations, all parts of the church everywhere, in our local, in our conference, in the United States and worldwide. Heal these leaders to seek you first. We ask for procurement and courage and we see get around in, surrounding the COVID science shots May people be able to get those shots. May they feel encouraged to get those shots and keep these safe. We give you praise for closeness and readiness to care and to show it. Amen. And now let's join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Giving of ourselves is key to creativity and vigorous renewal in our intellect and in our lives. I'm so encouraged and just so heartened by the way so many of you have been giving so generously to the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church with your financial gifts, with your time, with your service, with your participation in online groups and in all so many ways. I encourage you to continue in that financial giving by using the giving portal that uh, link is pinned in our comment section. You can send checks into our DAUMC office. You can also give using your own financial institution online bill pay or by setting up an online giving with our financial institution. Just contact us in the church office for help with that. But your giving makes a world of difference in so many ways in this life of renewal and healing and creativity. I want to remind you to fill out that contact form and to use that prayer uh, request section there. Those prayer requests go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. I want to encourage you to continue to fully participate in the life of Douglas Avenue, reminding you that on Sunday, March 14th, there is an opportunity for you to come into the parking lot from 1 to 3 p.m. to pick up kits for our uh, Celebrate Wonder uh, full family uh, online education and worship series. Those kits will be available. Our Lenten activity kits will be available at that time. And you can also come by and be a part of distributing food to micro pantries in our community. All of those are wonderful wonderful ways for renewal and creativity and inspiration. And you're about to hear about another opportunity for renewal, inspiration, and exercising your creativity from Diana Trost. She leads with her husband, Joe, our community garden here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And we have a garden cleanup opportunity coming up on March 20th. So let's listen to Diana right now. Good morning, my name is Diana Trost. I started attending Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in June 2019 and quickly became involved in the community garden and other ministries. Douglas has so much to love, the servant hardness of the congregation, 
the acceptance of all people, and the love of God's creation, just to name a few. DAUMC's community garden began in 2016 and has developed in lots of different ways over the last five years, with people participating from the church and the wider community. The current goal of the garden is to care for God's creation while providing a pleasant space for the church and community members to enjoy. I encourage you to join in being a part of the community garden this season. Presently, most people involved rent a planting box to raise their own produce, but we have had people graciously plant flowers in the past for us to enjoy, and we'd like to eventually have enough people involved to raise extra food for others. I hope to have an increased crop of strawberries to share this year. Don't be intimidated if you're new to gardening. I didn't garden at all until my husband Joe introduced me to it in 2012. But now I'm completely hooked. Not only do you get the reward of fresh vegetables, well usually, but you get the exercise and outdoor activity and knowing you are helping the environment. So if you are interested, I invite you to join Joe and I as we kick off this year's DAUMC Community Garden. Okay, I'm busted. Joe and I couldn't wait and we already planted, but I digress. We are meeting this Saturday, March 20th, the official first day of spring, from 9 a.m. until approximately noon in the community garden, which is located behind the back parking lot off of Douglas Avenue. We will be assigning garden boxes to those who wish to rent one for the season for a suggested donation of $10 per box, and these funds will help us in future garden projects. But if you do not want a box, that's okay. We could use just a few extra helper, helpers for the morning. There's some spring cleanup to do. There's always trash to pick up. And there are some boxes that are deteriorating and we need help repairing them. There is some lumber on site for those repairs. So please feel free to drop by and check it out beforehand if you think you can help repair them to see what the situation is. We would need you to bring your tools, your muscles, and your know-how. We are also willing to instruct you in starting off your planting box if you're new to gardening. Radishes and lettuce are great plants to start with. So come even if you're inexperienced but interested. If you have garden gloves or any tools, bring those along too. And please feel free to contact me with any questions and for a box assignment if you can't make it this Saturday. But we hope to see lots of you on Saturday morning, March 20th. Thank you. Thanks, Diana, for updating us on what has become a DAUMC tradition. In today's scripture, Jesus stresses the importance of acting by faith. For those of you looking to put your faith into action, there are many ways for you to do so. This afternoon, from 1 to 3, we hope you will drive through the back parking lot of the church. You will be able to do three things. First, pick up your Celebrate Wonder activity kit for the spring session of our Wednesday night time of learning, prayer, and fun for the whole family. Second, if you have not already done so, you can pick up one of our Holy Vessels Lenten activity kits. Through the remainder of Lent, our weekly worship will feature a spiritual practice using items from your kit. And finally, third, we need help distributing food to the micro pantries throughout our community. We have the food at DAUMC. If you stop by, we will give you a box plus the address of a micro pantry that needs to be resupplied. It won't take you long, but it will make a big impact for those in our community facing food insecurity. Then on Saturday, April 10th, DAUMC will be hosting a blood drive for our local blood bank. You must reserve a time in advance to donate. You can get all the information you need in our weekly newsletter or by calling the church office. And if you would like to join us for in-person communion next Sunday, we would be happy to greet you. You can register online at the church website, www.douglasavenue.org. Now, let's return to worship. As we do our healing ritual today, I invite you to get your beach glass out that you have from your Lenten kit. Um, if you don't have beach glass, then just follow along with us now in a prayerful way. We have heard Jesus say in our healing story this week, the girl is not dead, but sleeping. 
Today, we have talked about our need to be rejuvenated in spirit, to awaken with new vigor for creativity and inspiration. This is the intellectual and creative healing that is tied to our spiritual healing. We may feel like we've been slowly dying away these last few months, but Jesus affirms that we are not dying. We perhaps are sleeping. We yearn to awaken, we, to be brought back to life with vitality and vigor for the days ahead. So I invite you this week to create a different picture from the brokenness. Take your pieces of beach glass and play with them, arranging them and moving them around on a flat surface as a mosaic artist might. Trying different configurations of what might be beautiful for you, delightful for you. You know, change them around and move them around. Even with the raw materials of our lives that we have to work with may feel broken. We can get a new perspective that can awaken us to a new vision for our life. When you've played with your glass and you've found a placement that you like, I encourage you to take a picture of it. Um, consider using it as a wallpaper on your phone or on your computer. Please email it to us if you would like to share it with us. Um, you can uh, put it onto the DAUMC Facebook page if you would like, or send it to Mark Schmidt by email. We love to be able to share in these together, whatever our artistic mosaic creations are. Let this different picture you've created with the glass be a reminder to you this week that we are capable of reworking, remaking the pictures of what life can be. Feel free to keep your mosaic creation on the table where you can see it frequently. Use it as a focal point for prayer, perhaps. Remember that you are loved. You are not alone. You are holy. You are whole. Please join us in singing, Be Thou My Vision, number 451 on our hymnal. Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been an honor to have this time with you, and I hope that you will join with us again for online worship, for in-person contemplative communion on Sunday mornings at 815, in all of the opportunities that we have for small groups and service that are available all through our website and through our e-news. Fill out that contact form so that we can be in contact with you, so that we can pray with you. We love you and really want to be a part of your life of faith and encourage you in that. And now as you go into your day, go with the confidence that you will awaken, that we all will awaken and reach out with creative healing that our neighbors, community, and world need. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. Take heart. 
you will be well. And may the Spirit deliver salve to your soul and power to your living. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Thank you.